George. At last. Yes, darling, I know. But you... It's ten o'clock and you did say nine. Yes, I've got the roses and they're beautiful. I love you too. Trouble? George, I wouldn't be happy doing that. I don't care how much you want to get her off the boat. <sighs> Paying my debts? Oh, come on. I've known you too long. Even now, when you snap your fingers. <laughs> yes, it's still the same. There's been a lot of water under the bridge. Oh, well, let's not talk about that. What do you want me to do? Start playing Archbitch? <laughs> No, seriously, George. Is this a personal vendetta? Well, as I see it, it's your cake and you cut it how you like. You always have. Because I refuse to be ordered around by a new chef who knows absolutely nothing about the running of this ship. He's preparing the food, not paddling the canoe. There is a difference between catering for a city restaurant and one at sea. He's very extravagant. You'd hand each passenger a fishing rod and tell them to catch their very own, would you? I don't think this is a matter that you can dismiss quite so flippantly, Miss Laker. Well, he wants the entire dining room rearranged. I simply cannot cope with the extra work involved. Oh, I do hope you're not offering your resignation. I always thought you were a very good restaurant manageress. No, Miss Laker. But I am pointing out that the kitchen and the restaurant staff might refuse to work under him. But you wouldn't let that happen, would you? Well, I can't control their actions. But that's your job. Miss Laker, you hired a new chef without bothering to inform me or anyone else. Well, if you've got the right to hire and fire anybody at will... If they can't cope with the changes, yes. Susan, I'm sure you'll manage. If not, let me know before we're underway, will you? Miss Laker, these changes of yours, are they designed to save this line or to speed up the change over to freight? If you can't cope, you stand to lose either way. on board, Mrs. Carter. Not a very good welcome, is it? I beg your pardon? Look at this cabin. No windows, the next best thing to the black hole of Calcutta. It isn't the one you booked, is it? You really think I have to book? I'm sorry. I'll see someone about having it changed right away, then pick up your bags. Which cabin would you like? My usual one. Number 5545. Name? Carter. Marion Carter. And you don't know it yet, kid, but you're on the line. Come on, pronto. <clears throat> Mrs. Carter, I'm Peter Nuttall, the assistant purser. Assistant purser? Y yes. Uh, can I help you? Yes, they are rather heavy. Everything okay now? It will be in a minute, I've no doubt. Can I offer you the ship's hospitality? Does that mean a drink? Yes, Mrs. Carter. It won't buy me, you know. I didn't think it would. Yes, all right. After all, it has been some time, hasn't it? And I expect you still keep your ear pretty close to the ground. Miss Laker? Yes, Captain Anderson. I'd like you to meet my wife. Miss Laker's the purser, darling. Oh, please, it's my ear. Kate, I'm very pleased to meet you. Yes. If you'll excuse me, I have rather a lot to do before departure. Of course. Bon cavale des chelves. What's that mean? Have the courage to be yourself. Don't follow that in English. Never mind Swedish. There's no need to call her Miss Laker for my benefit. Which way? I'm not surprised he usually keeps her locked up at home. Who? The old man. I've just seen his wife. That bad, huh? I'd wear a blindfold if I were you. No harm in looking. Anything else, it'd have your tongue for a bookmark. <laughs> now, 
Very nice. For me? Yes. Of course. For me also. Of course. And you went to all this trouble just for me. Mm. Sandy? Yes, Miss Laker? Has Peter boarded yet? I don't know. I thought he went ashore with you. No. Oh. Would you mind going back to see if he's in the departure lounge and tell him I need to see him immediately? I'm sure he can find his own way back. He is grown up now. I won't be long. Just make yourself at home. <laughs> I will try. Well, it shouldn't be that difficult. After all, this is my home. Oh, yes. I would not like to intrude. Is that what you say? You certainly won't be doing that. I'll be back as soon as we're underway. <sighs> Come in. Oh, hello. You wish to see John? Uh, yes. He is not here. No. Um, well, I'm sorry to have troubled you. I'll go and find him. Oh, you know where he will be, do you? Yes. Excuse me. Uh, no, please. I would like to talk to you a moment. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Anson. I don't have very much time at the moment. Perhaps later? In private. Your cabin, perhaps? Well, I... I don't really spend very much time in my cabin. Oh, no. No, no, no. That was silly of me. Yes. Excuse me. Why? What's wrong? Nothing. I just want to book ten minutes of your time. Haven't got any. What about lunchtime? Lunchtime? My ten minutes. I should be busy. Dinner time? Still busy. Bedtime? May I speak to you a moment, please, Captain? Yes, of course. I asked Peter not to leave the ship because of the quick turnaround, but, um... He went all the same. Yes. And he's late. Yes. He always is. Leaps on at the last minute. You mean he's always doing this sort of thing? Well, hasn't he ever been reprimanded? Oh, yes, he certainly has. Probably him not. Yeah. Yes. Yes, she's here. Somebody wants to see you in the terminal office. Who is it? Lars. Who is it, Lars? Jeremy Gates. Lars seems to think it's important. I'll be as quick as I can. Enjoy yourself ashore? Not enough time, really. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, I'll see you later. Where's Wonder Woman gone? Miss Laker? She was called to the office. Big Daddy Turson again, huh? No. Nope. Jeremy Gates. I think I'll give her a hand to find Peter. They've been liberated, Matt. After all, you've got one in every port. Now, there are any fish left in the sea, I ask myself. Maya, if you'd like to come up... Maya? It looks like Peter's really missed the ship this time. For the last time. Oh, come on, you can't be that tough on the kid. Life is tough. <laughs> Who's Jeremy Gates, by the way? A friend. A good one? Yes. Are you interested? Just don't want to step on anybody's toes. You wouldn't feel it if you did. Don't forget our date. Mr. Taylor? What can I do for you, gorgeous? I couldn't help overhearing your conversation with Miss Laker just now. I didn't know you cared. Jeremy Gates. That is the name she said, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Sounds quite a fella. Mm, you could say that. Oh, do you know him? 
I just wanted to check I wasn't hearing things. catch up with the national average. What? 2.5 times a week. According to my calculations... I'll work it out myself. Thank you, Charles. complaints about the new chef now. I'll wait for the passengers to do that. Fine. Or head office, maybe. Oh, really? Well, we're barely covering the cost of the price, and that is not good business. Unless, of course... Yes? Unless that's why you're here. You've seen a smorgasbord before, have you? Of course I have. And this one isn't right? Not to my mind. Come with me. Did you type this? Of course. When you have learnt to spell the word smorgasbord, you will have a right to comment on it. Here we are. Thank you. Two's company. Isn't that what they say? That's exactly what we say. Skull. Cheers. I wouldn't like you to uh, change your routine just because I am on board. Oh, Charles doesn't mind. I was talking about Kate. And what about her? So, you do know her name. <laughs> you said she had uh, asked us to have lunch with her? Yes, that's right. She's got a new chef. It's supposed to be a surprise. For who? Hmm? I am not blind, John. What are you talking about? No. If you're jealous, I'm very flattered, but you're way off course. Do you know who she is? I can guess. Her father owns this shipping line down half the rest of the world with it. The great Mr. Turson himself. That makes a difference. Are you suggesting that she and I are having some kind of a fling? She's very attractive. Yes, she is. Well, then. I meet dozens of attractive women in this job. Good God, if you were right, I'd spend half my time getting in and out of this uniform. Well, you count the buttons, you know I'm much too old for that. You? <laughs> much too old. You, you don't seriously think that she and I are having an affair? It could be. Can you swear that you never have? <laughs> It's about Peter. Oh, forget him. They're not worth it. No, Miss Laker, I think she wouldn't leave her time. Let me give you a little bit of advice, Sandy. No need to worry your head about her. No? No. You don't get to my age and my number of failures without finding out something. There's nothing going on between them. But there is, Joe. Don't listen to me, Mike. Please come to the first of Sandy, my call, Mike, please. Thank you. I think you better come down, Matt. Well, why didn't you ring? That's what the phone's for, Joe. No, it's best this way. We'll see what I mean. You've sprung a leak. You sent for me, Miss Laker? Yes, Sandy. I wonder if you could help me out. Why? Peter hasn't rejoined the ship. You fired him, haven't you? No. You have? If you think you can push people around and then expect me Sandy, to help calm you, calm gonna... down, dear, calm down. In case people see what kind of woman you are, let them see you. See how much you hate your own son.
Sandy, are you all right? Emotions run high, it see, it would seem. What's the matter with Sandy? Well, it's all right, Captain. I'll sort it out. Aren't you joining us for lunch? I'm afraid I haven't time. How unfortunate. <laughs> but I'd be very interested in your opinion, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, I should notice an improvement. Uh, the smorgasbord. Ah. Well, being a Swede, I'd be very interested to hear what you think. It is a genuine smorgasbord. It's a Swedish chef. On an English ship. She lured him away from a Swedish one. Really? She is obviously very well practiced. <laughs> Miss Lager is. You don't expect to find her where she's actually needed, do you? Well, if you see her, tell her I'm looking for her, will you? You're wasting your time. She's only interested in men who are useful to her. Just tell her, will you? You do know who Jeremy Gates is, don't you? Apart from her lover, I mean. Oh, hello, Captain Anderson. Mrs. Anderson, your table's ready for you. Thank you. Matt, you haven't met my wife. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. need your help, Mr. Taylor. It's Peter. Because diamonds come from Amsterdam. Find yourself a tiara, then. A ring. To get in the way of your nimble fingers. It's for your finger. Oh. I'm proposing. Thank you. What happened between you and Peter? You're changing the subject. I don't think I am. You can't marry him to keep him quiet. And even if you could, blood's thicker than marriage lines. This does look so good, doesn't it? Yes. I never did do for you a smirgos board, did I? No. Well, I will not have to bother now. She is supplying that as well. Wouldn't it be better in his own cabin? No, I'd rather he stayed here. Uh -huh. Do you want me to report it to John or will you? No. Okay, well, I will then. No, no, I don't want it reported, not to anyone. Well, it has to be. There's no need, please. <laughs> okay, you can go now, thanks, Jack. Right. You sure you didn't see this happen? Delicious. Teddy will go to the local school and Emily will be old enough to go to the gymnasium. When's all this going to happen? As soon as possible. I cannot see any point in putting it off. At least your children will grow up bilingual. What are you trying to tell me? <laughs> tell you? <laughs> oh, well, I had to find out for myself. Now I am just uh, working out the best way to handle things. What the hell are you talking about? John, people are listening. <laughs> Eat up or she will be very upset. Are you sure you don't mind staying with her? John knows where I am. You still don't want it reported, huh? No. What are you afraid of? Destroying him. Sit down, please. I have not finished. This is ridiculous. Yes. You walk on this ship, you take one look at Miss Laker, and all of a sudden you want a divorce. Oh, no, no, no. It's not sudden at all. But you do want a divorce, don't you? And you'd like to use Miss Laker as some sort of way out. No, it takes two, darling. Smile, they're watching you. Who is it? The man, who is he? Oh, do not try that, John. I'm not a fool. I know, so who is he? That is not the point. I am divorcing you. Oh, no. Oh. She is. <laughs> they don't need pictures for evidence now, do they? So embarrassing. 
Did you enjoy your lunch? It was superb. Is that the word for totally and completely successful in every way? Good. I'm so glad. Did you enjoy it, Captain? Excuse me. He never will stay in one place for five minutes, will he? Thank you. For everything. Oh, he hardly ate a thing. Just lie still, Peter, lie still. Look, don't try and move. Don't try and move. Matt? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Oh, God. <laughs> what happened, Peter? Was it an accident? Come on, I want to hear it from you. What happened? What for? She told you enough, didn't she? I bet she didn't leave anything out, either. She's told me nothing. She won't even let me report it. I don't believe you. Well, you should. It's true. Why? I don't know. You should know the answer to that. Why the hell should I know why she does anything? <laughs> I think you do, Peter. <laughs> to get what she wants. She's got me. Same way she got my father. And killed him. Never? If you want a divorce, you're going to have to get it the hard way. But why? Because I'm not going to be used anymore. What do you think I am? Some kind of raving idiot let you and your fancy man... <laughs> oh, what quaint English you use. Yes, well, whoever and whatever he is, if you want him, you're going to have to crawl through the mud to get him and without the children. But the children want to be with me. Want? You talk to them already. Of course. I am not going to let you take my children to live with you and your bloody lover. So you are refusing to let me divorce you? That's right. This is your whole life, isn't it? It's my job. Your whole life? And there is no place in it for me. Even if that was true, which it is not, I'm not letting you off the hook that easily. If you think you can ditch me, take my kids, marry some bastard you've been having an affair with and still come up smelling of roses, you better think again. You do intend to marry him, I take it. Oh, yes. Then why don't you tell me who he is? He's Swedish. Back to your own kind. You could put it that way. Or you could say I have discovered that it is only possible to really make love in one's own language. <laughs>